G'day guys, it's Tim Guest here and welcome to video one of our coronavirus series. For all our clients that have attended our one day intensive training program in the past five years, I've always dedicated the last session of the day to educating you in economic cycles. Now most specifically the global land cycle, which is the most influential of them all. Now ask an everyday person how long an economic cycle is and the typical answer is seven to 10 years. The long-term historical evidence has shown though that they're not. The global land cycle has actually run at an average of 18.6 years, normally ranging from 17 to 21 years, and it has done so since the mid 1700s. On only one occasion has it fallen outside of this range by only a year, and that required global war, i.e. World War II, just to give you a little bit of a sense of how large an event must be to move the cycles just a little. Now let me briefly walk you through it, starting from the first expansion phase. This phase averages around seven years and is restricted in its growth by tight credit and the hesitancy created by the not too distant recessionary period. The restrictions on credit are a fallout from governments tightening regulations that led to the overvaluation and over leveraging of the previous boom. Because of the constrained resources in this part of the cycle, what drives this phase is innovation and speculation. This speculation will eventually come undone as some innovation becomes viable and others don't a rebalancing is required and hence a stock market correction is due. This is referred to as the mid-cycle slowdown. The mid-cycle slowdown is a stock market correction which will impact business and economies globally, but due to tight credit restrictions of the first expansion phase, the market isn't over leveraged and there is no corresponding significant correction in land values. The subsequent fallout of the mid-cycle slowdown is an easing of credit, government stimulus, and all the money that has been sitting on the sidelines for years, waiting for value, now into this market, driving the second seven-year expansion phase as we build to the peak of the overall cycle. Now, it's also worthwhile noting that this last two years of the second expansion phase is referred to as the winner's curse. And this is where continued easy credit, growing incomes, and bullish sentiment pushes markets to again become overvalued, but this time, also over leveraged due to the loose credit of the previous four to six years. Eventually this will lead to the next stock market correction, like the mid-cycle slowdown, but now as the market is over leveraged and lacks the buffers and safety nets re required to sustain its assets, distress selling and bankruptcies then push us deeper than the mid-cycle and into the four year recessionary period until the market balances out again. So that's the cycle. You may also notice the time between major stock market corrections being 7 and 11 years, hence why people often think economic cycles are 7 or 10 years long. Depending on your age, you may be able to recognise some of these periods from memory. Our last recessionary period was 2008 to 2012 and was known as the GFC. In the cycle before it, the recessionary period in the late 80s and early 90s was the recession that we had to have. You may also remember the last winner's curse, 2006 to 2008. Personally, I can remember walking into first home opens, there would be 80 people there and 10 offers all over the asking price made that day. A bit older, and you may even remember similar boom times in the late 80s, the days of Alan Bond and Laurie Connell, of Bicentenaries and America's Cups. The last mid-cycle slowdown we experienced was triggered by the dot-com bubble of 2001. The invention of the internet drove huge speculation. When the mid-cycle slowdown arrived, the bubble burst and some internet stocks disappeared overnight. Even heavyweight Amazon halved in value. Now looking as we head into this current mid-cycle slowdown, we can see we are coming off one of the great bull runs in stock market history, where there's been virtually no corrections since 2011. Now remember, I've been teaching you there would be a mid-cycle slowdown in 2020 for five years now, and I even sent an email to all clients back in December recommending that you change your superannuation and share portfolios to a more defensive structure. Those that did have saved thousands. The largest I know of from one of our clients was $300,000. As the first expansion phase was coming to an end, uncertainty has been building on the back of the US China trade war Brexit and tensions in the Middle East and South China Sea, and eventually a global event occurs which is the final straw that breaks the back of the market and the bubble has to burst and here we are again, a stock market reaction, correction. It just so happens this time around the event was a global pandemic. It's also interesting to note though that previous pandemics didn't cause the same stock market corrections because those pandemics occurred in different stages of the land cycle. 
Just take the 2009 H1N1 pandemic as an example. Estimates from the Centers for Disease Control are as high as half a billion people dying, with 1.2 billion people worldwide infected, and yet we probably hardly remember it, with no lasting impact on the economy. Global stock markets will find a floor as fundamental investors into the market seeking value. As opposed to speculation, fundamental investors don't gamble on the possible future value of what they are investing in. They look for simple fundamentals, like the price to earnings ratio of a stock. This value investing, along with easy credit and government stimulus, will then drive the cycle on the trajectory to its peak. And you can already see this happening. Governments and central banks around the world are now flooding the market with money. So far, $187 billion in stimulus has been approved here in Australia, and $2 trillion has now been passed in the US. Governments are following suit around the world. The reaction to the mid-cycle slowdown has been swift, large, and isn't at all over yet. It's these kinds of responses that set us up for the second expansion phase in the cycle. Coupling massive government stimulus with easy and cheap credit moves us towards the peak. It's anticipate to ar anticipated to arrive around 2026, 2027, when the world will move again into its recessionary period and the cycle starts again. It's also very valuable for me to include here that one of the most common questions I receive from the public is how was I able to buy 13 properties in five years? Now, while I didn't know it at the time, I started my investment journey off the back of the previous mid-cycle slowdown. Simply put, the mid-cycle slowdown provides some of the best buying opportunities for the next 18 years, give or take a couple. And it's not to say that there won't be challenges for many over the coming months, some more than others. There may be people we care about or something you are even facing yourself. My heart goes out to you. I've created a video for anyone experiencing difficulty and what immediate relief there is available. Of course, you should also reach out to us via your client manager or any of our social media channels. We're always here and it's not uncommon that a chat with our team results in savings of thousands of dollars a year. In the next video, I'm going to cover COVID-19 and its impact on the Australian economy and the property market overall. Stay tuned and I'll see you soon.